This video includes a paid sponsorship from Ridge, but I'll talk more about that later. Ford announced on Thursday of last week that they are partnering with Tesla, and in early next year, Ford EVs will have access to over 12,000 superchargers in the USA and Canada. As part of this announcement, Elon Musk and Jim Farley even jumped on a Twitter Spaces chat, and from what Elon Musk talked about during that conversation, it appears like beyond charging and beyond Ford having access to Tesla's supercharger network and that collaboration there, it appears like Tesla might might even in the future be helping Ford on the software end. So let's talk about the details of this announcement and then also go beyond that and talk a little bit about Tesla possibly helping Ford with software in the future. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. In an official press release that Ford published on May 25th of this year, Ford came out and announced the fact that they reached a deal with Tesla and starting in the spring of next year, so spring of 2024, Ford's electric vehicles will be able to charge at 12,000 plus superchargers in the US and Canada. While this is really big news and it's really exciting news, even more importantly, Ford's next generation of EVs will include the North American charging standard charge ports, which if you're not aware is what Tesla now calls their previously exclusive charging port connector, one that Tesla designed themselves. When it comes to the timing of Ford integrating these NACS um, charging ports into their vehicles, according to this official press release from Ford once again, in 2025, starting in 2025, is when Ford plans to equip their future EVs with this NACS charge port, which really plays along with something that Tesla wants. And that's for the NACS or the North American Charging Standard, as they call it now. They want that to be the actual standard for North America, as the name implies. While CCS, which stands for Combined Charging System, has become the charging port standard for non-Tesla EVs in North America and Europe, in North America, Tesla wants to make their connector the standard for North America instead of CCS1. When it comes to why this makes a lot of sense, in November of 2022, uh, Tesla published a blog post, and in this blog post, they revealed the name for their new charging connector design, NACS, and they publicly made a case for it to be adopted by other automakers and make it the standard in North America. But before I dive into the details and why this makes a lot of sense, I want to introduce the sponsor of today's video. This portion of today's video is sponsored by Ridge. Are you looking for some great Father's Day gift ideas or just looking to upgrade your own wallet? Well, Ridge is making gifting easy with one of their biggest sales of the year, for Father's Day. Their high quality wallets expand to hold up to 12 cards. And in addition to holding cards, it also has a place on the back where you can store cash as well. And when it comes to the key case, and these key cases can hold between one and six keys, and it secures them in this case and keeps them from jingling and jangling about in your pocket. And in addition, this key case has a nice metal clip on the back, so you can clip that to your belt. Find a great Father's Day gift or upgrade your own wallet by using my link, which is ridge.com forward slash cleaner watt. And right now you can save up to 40% off through June 15th. Once again, go to ridge.com forward slash cleaner watt or click the link in the video description. Thanks again to Ridge for sponsoring this portion of today's video. In this November of 2022 Tesla blog post, they officially announced, quote, in pursuit of our mission to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, today we are opening our EV connector design to the world. We invite charging network operators and vehicle manufacturers to put the Tesla charging connector and charge port, now called the North American Charging Standard, NACS, on their equipment and vehicles. Now back in 2012 with the launch of the Tesla Model S, instead of going with an existing or new charging standard like Chatamo, which came out um, in 2019, or the then brand new CCS, which was just being introduced in 2012, Tesla went with their own proprietary charging connector, which even after more than a decade is clearly the best engineered charging standard, one that I hope will be adopted by many more companies in the future. Now, the reason that Tesla has stuck with their own 
charging connector over the years, not only has to do with the fact that that's what they started with, but also when you compare the Tesla connector to the CCS connectors, um, the Tesla connector is far superior. Here's how Tesla explained it in that blog post from November of 2022. Quote, with more than a decade of use and 20 billion EV charging miles to its name, the Tesla charging connector is the most proven in North America, offering AC charging and up to one megawatt DC charging in one slim package. It has no moving parts, is half the size and twice as powerful as combined charging system, CCS, connectors. In this post, Tesla even included these photos showing the side-by-side -side profile of a CCS connector versus the Tesla connector. You can see there just how much more compact and slim the Tesla connector is. And as they mentioned, it's actually twice as powerful despite being much smaller as compared to the CCS connector. So when you compare Tesla's charging connector to the CCS connector, it's obvious which one is superior. And I believe because of this, now that Tesla is willing to share this with other automakers, I believe a number of other automakers, at least in North America, will also move to adopt this in the future. Now, beyond the product itself being superior, um, there are more Tesla EVs on the road in North America than all other brands combined by a large margin. So NACS already has the majority in North America. In addition, Tesla already has the largest and best charging network in North America as well to support it. These are both points that this Tesla blog post makes very clear by saying, quote, NACS is the most common charging standard in North America. NACS vehicles outnumber CCS two to one and Tesla's supercharging network has 60% more NACS posts than all the CCS equipped networks combined. Now, Ford is not the first company that plans to add the NACS chargers to their vehicles because in late November of last year, EV startup Aptera announced that they would be integrating the NACS standard into their unique three-wheeled EVs that hopefully will go into production in the near future. While that was good news, and I'm glad to see that Aptera is taking on Tesla's NACS charging standard, now that a large company like Ford plans to adopt the NACS charging standard, I believe this could be enough to push others like Hyundai, Kia, GM, etc. to adopt NACS in the future as opposed to CCS1, and I believe it's very possible that within the next few years, Tesla's NACS standard will render CCS obsolete, at least in North America. While Tesla is the clear leader in EV volume in the United States, by far, in 2022, Ford sold the second most EVs in the USA. Now beyond the Ford press release, as I mentioned in the intro of the video, Elon Musk and Jim Farley jumped on a Twitter spaces to chat about this, and I wanna talk about a few takeaways um, from their May 25th chat. Now during Elon and Jim's Twitter Spaces chat, Elon Musk made it very clear, and this is a topic that he's talked about in the past quite a bit, but it is not Tesla's intent to make the supercharger network a walled garden. Beyond just allowing Ford EVs to use the supercharging network, in the future, um, Elon Musk even went as far as saying, quote, and have Ford be on an equal footing at Tesla superchargers. When it comes to what Elon Musk meant by on equal footing, I believe at the very least it includes the ease of use of the supercharger network, just plug in and go, and likely the speed of charging as well. But in addition to that, I think it's very likely that Ford EVs will not pay a higher rate than a Tesla at their supercharger station, since this is a specific partnership between Ford and Tesla. In their conversation, Jim Farley made it very clear that with their next generation of EVs, they're not gonna be focusing on big batteries, but rather their fast charging network and integrated electronics, etc. And Jim also made mention of how hard it was to make embedded electric architectures. In response to that, Elon Musk even said, quote, we are happy to be helpful in other aspects on the software front. There may be something where we can be helpful there. Elon then even threw out the possibility of Tesla software kind of being open source, sort of like Android is in the future. Um, and maybe more automakers could use Tesla software as well. So I definitely see some kind of software play for Tesla in the future. 
Now, when it comes to Tesla's software prowess, beyond their impressive infotainment software, which is considered an industry best, Tesla really pioneered a connected electric vehicle architecture that allows them to adjust various aspects of the car with an over-the-air software update. Other automakers may offer over-the-air software updates, but at least in the USA, no one has been able to match the level of software integration that Tesla has managed, and Tesla is getting better and better with every generation of vehicles that they bring out. During Tesla's 2023 Investor Day, which was held on March 1st of this year, this slide was used to demonstrate how Tesla was simplifying the electrical architecture of their cars by designing more and more controllers in-house which can be designed for their specific purposes and can also combine the functions of more than one off-the-shelf unit in a single Tesla-designed unit. Beyond simplifying the system and reducing manufacturing cost, which was really the main focus of this part of the Tesla presentation, I am pretty certain that as Tesla has incorporated more and more in-house designed controllers into their electrical architecture, um, this has allowed them even greater ability to update, change, and improve more and more aspects of the vehicle. Their next generation of electric vehicles, like the Compact EV, is planned to have 100% Tesla-designed controllers, and eventually that will trickle down, and at some point, I believe all Tesla EVs will reach this as well. Thankfully, Jim Farley and the Ford team definitely understand the importance of software to their future success with EVs. And this was made very clear by Jim in Ford's Q4 2022 investor conference call. When Jim said, quote, now we are deep in the development of our second generation EVs, including our next generation electric full-size pickup, which by the way is awesome. When it comes to this next generation of EVs, Jim Farley also mentioned, quote, these EVs will be fully software updatable. That means a brand new electric architecture, and they're going to be radically simplified. Once again, later on in the call, Jim reiterated how important software was for Ford's future electric vehicles when he said, quote, and I can't wait to show you our new electric architecture because to me, that's the most critical strategic investment the company is making. Not our batteries, not the EV platforms, but our new fully updatable electric architecture. But when it comes to bringing this electric architecture to life, um, as Jim made very clear in the Twitter Spaces chat, uh, he's experiencing firsthand that it's extremely hard to build a connected system like what Tesla has built. It's really great to see that Elon is willing to help Ford on their software because at the end of the day, um, Elon and the Tesla team's goal is to push forward sustainable transportation and to get as many EVs on the road as possible. And helping Ford in this way really does further that mission. Um, Obviously, Tesla will be making some money from this supercharger deal. And I believe Tesla would make a lot of money from some kind of software play uh, between them and Ford in the future. But nonetheless, it's great to see the leader in electric vehicles, Tesla, help a company like Ford, which is really important, I believe, for EV adoption in the future. Now, when it comes to Ford's EV plans in the future, as Jim made very clear once again in that Q4 2022 um, investor conference call, by the end of 2026, they hope to have um, 2 million units of incremental capacity, which would be a huge jump from the nearly 100,000 EV units that they sold in 2022. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I also wanna say once again, thank you to Ridge for sponsoring this video. And also thank you to all of those of you who support me on Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and helps make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community that I've set up and how you can support my work, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.